The concept of the mole. Mole refers to a number. Just like dozen refers to the number 12, mole refers to the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We use it to talk about the number of atoms of an element. The standard is the isotope carbon-12. 12. 12 grams of carbon-12 contains exactly 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We will use the number of the mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, as a conversion factor. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is equal to one mole of a substance. We call this Avogadro's number. It's named after a chemist, Amadeo Avogadro, who did a lot of work with gases. They named it after him as an honor. When we use the phrase molar mass to refer to the atomic weight on the periodic table, we are saying that that is the mass for that element of one mole of that element. It's rounded to two decimal places, or the nearest hundredth, and the unit is grams per mole. Grab your periodic table. When you look up the mass of any of these elements, sodium, potassium, copper, nitrogen, bromine, or oxygen, that is the mass of one mole of that substance. Let's look one up. Let's look up oxygen. Oxygen from the periodic table rounds up to the nearest hundredth as 16.00 grams per mole. In order to calculate the molar mass of compounds, we have to add all of the atoms that are present in that compound. You'll notice that some of these compounds have subscripts like the 2 in H2O, or this 2 in CO2. The 2, the subscript, applies to the element directly to its left. So in the case of H2O, that compound is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So when calculating the molar mass, we would add the mass of two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom. Water is one of those common ones that you should probably go ahead and memorize. Each hydrogen atom has a mass of 1.01 grams per mole. If we double that, and multiply it times 2, we get 2.02. If we add to that the mass of oxygen, 16.00 grams per mole, the sum for water is 18.02 grams per mole. Again, we use water a lot in chemistry. That's a good one to memorize. The next one is carbon monoxide, made up of one carbon with a mass of 12.01 grams per mole and oxygen at 16.00 grams per mole. The sum total of that would be 28.01 grams per mole. The difference between CO and CO2 is that you would add an additional oxygen mass to that. When we add 16 more grams per mole to that, the sum total is 44.01 grams per mole. Likewise with the last example, we would take the mass of one calcium and add to that the mass of two chlorines to get the total molar mass for the compound of calcium chloride. We can use Avogadro's number, as well as molar mass, as conversion factors. In problems in chemistry, we often need to go between grams of a substance and moles of a substance, and also moles of a substance to number of atoms or molecules of a substance. Grams per mole is a conversion factor. Likewise, Avogadro's number, the mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole is also a conversion factor. Let's go through some examples of how to use that. In this problem, we're asked to convert from moles to grams. The question reads, how many grams of lithium are in 3.50 moles of lithium? 
So first we go find lithium on the periodic table. We see that the mass is reported as 6.941. We need to round that to the nearest hundredth. That's two decimal places. The second, second decimal place is the four. The number to its right, one, would not round four up. So it becomes simply 6.94. 6.94 grams per mole is our conversion factor. Our given information is the 3.50 moles of lithium. The number of significant digits is based on the given information. And in this case, we have three significant digits. Therefore, our final answer will have three significant digits, regardless of the conversion factor. Conversion factors are never used to determine significant digits. OK, to set up the problem, given information goes in the first bracket. Since we need to go from moles to grams, we know that we can use the molar mass of grams per mole as our conversion factor. We just need to arrange it so that moles and moles cross cancel. As far as the math goes, we'll multiply 3.50 times 6.94 divided by 1 to come up with the answer of 45.1. The unit is the leftover unit from the bracket, grams of lithium, and that answers the question. In our second example, it's the reverse. This time we are given 18.2 grams of lithium, and the question is, how many moles would that be? So we write down our given information in the first bracket. We cross-cancel our units, so we establish that grams of lithium will go in the bottom of the second bracket. Since our conversion factor is moles per gram, or grams per mole, we put one mole of lithium on the top. The math is that we will take 18.2 times 1 divided by 6.94 grams and our final answer is stated to three significant digits because our initial given information was in three significant digits. And in this case, the answer is 2.62 moles of lithium. Now we do kind of a common sense check. If one mole is about seven grams, and I have about two and a half times that with 18.2 grams, my answer ought to be about two and a half, and it is. Using Avogadro's number, we can convert from moles to number of atoms of an element. It asks, how many atoms of lithium are in 3.50 moles of lithium? 3.5 moles is our given information. We use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, per mole as our conversion factor, and set it up so that moles and moles cross cancel. For the math, we're going to take 3.50 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to get the final answer of 2.11 times 10 to the 24 atoms of lithium. Again, the given information of three significant digits determines the number of significant digits here. You'll notice that sometimes Avogadro's number has been given as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which is accurate, but it will suffice for us to round it to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, just like the quantity that we use to celebrate Mole Day. We celebrate it at 6.02 on October the 23rd. And our final example is the more complicated example, of course. This is combining both types of conversion to go all the way from grams to atoms. Notice that molar mass is our bridge between these two processes. We begin with 18.2 grams of lithium, that's our given. So we use molar mass and set it up with grams on bottom, mole on top, so that grams and grams cross cancel. And in the second step, we use Avogadro's number of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole as our second conversion factor, again setting it up so that moles and moles cancel. In this way, we can convert from grams to atoms. The math will be 18.2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.94 to get the answer of 1.58 times 10 to the 24 atoms. The same process can be used for molecules. When we're dealing with molecules like H2O or CO2 or NaCl, instead of using the word atom, we simply use the word molecule. But Avogadro's number remains constant at 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now go back and look at these four examples again because I want you to notice that in each case there was a conversion with moles. 
moles will always be one of the steps in these conversion problems, either grams per mole or atoms per mole. I hope this helps you get a grasp on these calculations. Don't forget, you have a quiz coming up where you'll get a chance to demonstrate your mastery of this. Good luck.